Hello, my name is Meg and in this video we'll be looking at how you can use Minecraft Education Edition to address the arts curriculum from the Australian curriculum. So in the Australian curriculum, the arts are split up into five different subject areas. The extent to which these are offered in schools across the country will depend on the school. But the five subject areas are dance, drama, media arts, music and visual arts. So within each of the subject areas, the curriculum wants students to understand how that particular area of the arts works. In foundation or pre-primary through to year six, it's about exploring ideas and understanding the practices of that particular area of the arts. And then in year seven to 10, students are building on those skills and um, developing and refining their understandings. I'm not gonna dig into each subject area individually in terms of the curriculum, uh, but if you want to do that yourself, on the ACARA website uh, under the arts, you can look at, for example, media arts, and you'll see there the curriculum descriptors for each year group, and then elaborations of what that might look like in practice. For the sake of this video, uh, which is meant to be broad, I'll start off by looking at some Minecraft tools and items that could be useful across all of the subject areas. And then I will address each subject area separately, looking at um, items and tools and, and bits and pieces that I think are useful for those subject areas. So if there's a subject area you're interested in in particular, feel free to skip ahead to that point in the video. At the end of the video, I'll be showcasing some existing worlds and lesson plans uh, that work really well um, for the arts. So I've just jumped into a regular creative uh, Minecraft world to show you some of the general features that could be useful across all of the different subject areas in the arts. So um, the first tip I wanted to share with you was you, if you're playing with a keyboard and mouse, you can press the F1 button to hide your HUD or heads up display. If you're playing on the iPad, you can do this by going through the settings, uh, going to the menu and going through settings to turn on or off the HUD, so H-U-D or heads up display. So you can also access that option. And this is really useful if you've created something that you'd like a really, really nice photo of um, within the game. So you want to take a screenshot either on the iPad or the computer, but you don't want the HUD cluttering up the look of your creation. So just like a, a really short, um, tip there. Staying with those sorts of tips, if you press F5, we can actually change the viewpoint um, of the character and that's through using a keyboard and mouse. So you can see here um, that allows you to see your character within the world rather than through their eyes. Um, so if, again, if you're on the iPad, uh, you'll need to go through the settings menu to trigger or toggle between these different uh, camera views and so this can also be useful if you're wanting to take a, either a video or a screen recording or a screen capture of something within the game um, and you would like it to, to see your character within the world. I mean the other way you could go about this is to have a second player in the game and screen record or screen capture from their screen as well. So you can still move around and interact with the world when you're in um, playing around with these settings uh, but they are two quick things you can mess around with that could be useful for any activities you have planned, especially when you're creating things and you want to capture those creations. Uh, a few other items that are unique to Education Edition, which could be useful for your activities, uh, is one is the camera here, mentioned in some of our other videos. If I right click or place the camera on the floor, you can see there it looks like a very old style camera, which could be useful to have a discussion about uh, why the camera looks the way it does, quite different from how cameras look today. Good for a photography lesson there. Uh, if I right click or tap or interact with the camera, some smoke will start coming off. It will flash like a creeper does. And after a, se a few seconds, it will take a photo. And to see those photos, uh, we need another item, new item for Education Edition called the Portfolio here, which is our basically our photo book. 
if I right click to look at my or open my portfolio you can see any photos I have taken I can add add a caption to my photo and I also have the option to export this portfolio as a, as a PDF or um, another file type to save it outside of the game. So this is very useful for capturing student achievements and creations uh, if you want to assess their work or have a record of their work outside of the game. So again the portfolio and the camera can only be found in Education Edition available on both um, there you can get them in, in either the iPad or the computer um, really good instead of taking a screenshot you could use the camera there you can annotate or sorry caption the photos and within the portfolio we can also access immersive reader which will help read out verbally the any captions or, or text that we have put into our portfolio so that will help with struggling readers there now I did have a look at dance and I feel a lot of dance is very physical and you cannot replicate that within Minecraft now regular Minecraft does have emotes where the characters uh, that you can see can can dance and do little actions however these are not yet available in education edition the only thing I could think of around um, Minecraft being used for dance is if you're doing and this is for drama as well which we'll talk about in a minute is if you're doing anything around set design mood lighting um, and, and anything like that and you wanted students to create a 3d model of that set design it could be useful uh, for those purposes um, but beyond that I found it hard because uh, dance is such a practical subject um, I think it's quite hard to work it into that because a lot of the curriculums are out about developing your body sense but we would love to hear your ideas if you have any ideas about uh, integrating Minecraft into dance so this is the set design world that you can easily download uh, through the Minecraft lesson plans and it's great uh, for set design and drama because suddenly we can create a 3D representation of the set beyond just 2D drawings. So students can get um, really immersed and involved in designing their uh, 3D version of the set. Obviously it's not going to be perfect because we are limited to a cubic sort of represent blocky representation of our set, but they can start planning out how the set's going to look like in 3D, how uh, actors are going to move through and, and interact with the set there are a lot of different blocks uh, to explore in Minecraft to represent a lot of different objects and props and uh, buildings within within the real world and you could also use the mobs and animals and uh, bad guys <laughs> if you like as well so again you could use your, your camera to take a photo of the set or you could take a screen recording and have students narrate their design decisions of the set as they walk through and um, the design or you could have them even recreate sections of the play and verbally narrate and do the lines of the different characters if you had multiple players in the same world and the other thing is they can if you have a team of students working together they can collaborate on the set design all together which I think is hard to do on on harder to do on pen and paper um, so this is the basic set design here world here with a bunch of different empty rooms for many groups of students uh, to engage with there the other thing I think is very useful for uh, using Minecraft in dra drama is our NPCs or non-player characters. So in creative mode, if you look up spawn NPC or you can just type in NPC for non-player character, you'll see a rainbow looking egg. Now if I get out my rainbow looking egg, I'll change back to this view, um, nothing's happening it's not working this might happen to you now if this does happen to you there is a setting that needs to be toggled or turn on or off to get NPCs working uh, it's called world builder so you can do that through the settings menu or you can do it with a slash command so I'm going to type in forward slash WB is the shortcut 
for world builder to turn the world builder status to true you can see that up the top left i should now be able to create npcs the reason this is usually off is if you create too many animals and, and, and npcs it can start lagging the server so you may want to let students know not to do that <laughs> um, or only give certain students that permission to create npcs here NPCs can be great for representing characters in a story and the other thing we can do is once we have created the NPC if I interact with that NPC I can change their appearance uh, within uh, our menu here we have a bunch of different costumes available um, it's still limited but they are adding more costumes as time goes by and let's say we want a biohazard character <laughs> I can change their name and I can give them dialogue. This is why I think it's really useful for drama and English and literacy because now we can give them lines to say, obviously it's not going to be interactive, but um, it is there. The other thing we can do, if you want to explore, I won't go into depth in this video, but you can also add commands for the characters so that when they are interacted with perhaps they gift the player an item or they do something um, once they have interacted with the player you can also put a url in the speech bubble if you want to direct students or people interacting with the npc to a to a website outside of minecraft so there we go um, now if i turn world builder back off i can interact with doug here and see the dialogue immersive reader is available if you would like immersive reader to verbally say the dialogue as well it's in a very robotic voice though so, <laughs> um, so yeah that's our npcs and there were just some ideas that i thought were really useful for addressing uh, the drama curriculum one of the ways I see Minecraft being used in the media arts is, a, is as a tool to create um, short stories and films and, in, and as a visual medium. So like we said, using F1 and F5, we can change our, our perspective and our viewpoint and also remove the HUD so it looks a bit more seamless. We can still explore conventions and imagery and symbolism and, and all those sorts of things. We can use, uh, now this is an existing world you can use, or you could have students create their own settings and narratives and characters using the non-player characters, uh, like I have mentioned in previously, um, can also help students set up their world or their story so again if your non-player no. character isn't working the egg isn't working turn on world builder mode and you can add your own characters into the story as well and give them lines of dialogue so uh, using um, on ipad and on pc or mac there are inbuilt screen recording tools that you can use to easily record the screen and what is happening yeah. within the game you can then export and use those video files in a video editor to cut together a movie uh, another term you can look up to help you find examples of the uh, existing work is machina which yeah. is just sort of a word meaning films or, or short videos made within a game so that's one way you could use media arts Another way is, is to explore creating mini games or games within Minecraft itself. Part of the media arts curriculum is that students have to design their own media artworks. So this could be film, but it also could be games uh, or, or other videos. So one way you could use Minecraft is have students create mini games or, or other games within Minecraft. So one of the existing worlds uh, uses these item frames on a wall um, as part of a scavenger hunt. So student, this is in, not in creative mode, students have to explore the world, collect certain items and bring the items back and display them here in the item frames as part of a mini game. When designing your mini games you can leave uh, players instructions through the slates and boards or even through NPCs and non-player characters throughout the world. Okay, in this section of the video, I wanted to talk about how we could use Minecraft in music. It doesn't seem like it would be a good fit, but there are some uh, music making blocks in Minecraft that make it a really interesting 
thing to play around with to make songs. Now, uh, so within Minecraft, there are a few blocks that are really good for music. So I'm in creative mode. If you have a look, there is the jukebox. Now the jukebox will play um, other items called um, music discs and each disc will have a different pre-recorded song. So if you place the jukebox within the world and then put the music disc in the jukebox, it will play that specific song. Oopsies. There we go. So you could look at the pre-existing songs and, and break down the songs and analyze them or try creating your own Minecraft inspired songs. That's one way you could go about it. Now I'm just gonna get rid of that jukebox so it stops playing music. Um, the other block which I find what I think would be more useful in music lessons is the note block. Now this block looks very similar to the jukebox. So don't try not to get them confused. The jukebox will have the black line or the slot for the music disc on the top and the note block does not have that. Uh, the note block plays one note of music if it is interacted with. Um, the interesting thing is every time I hit it, the note will rise in pitch and the color of the little um, music symbol is a key to what note the music block is playing. So you can look up online um, for a guide on what color different colored notes mean and how to get the note that you are, a specific note that you are looking for. The, the blocks work, uh, the way the note blocks work is they have to have a one block of air above them. So if I place um, like another building block on top of the note block, it will no longer work. So just keep that in mind that the one uh, block above the music um, block always has to, or the note block, sorry, always has to be clear for this to play, actually play music. It can be heard, the music block can be heard for uh, up to about 40, 48 blocks, I believe it was, away. Um, so quite far away and the volume will decrease as you move away from the block, which is also um, really cool to see. The other thing we can do with the note blocks, which I thought was really fun, um, is change the instrument that is making the note. The way you change the instrument is by having different types of blocks underneath the note block. I haven't put them all up here because there are so many. Again, you can uh, do a quick Google online to find the legend or, or the key to figuring out which block you need underneath to get which instrument. I've just got a few here to demonstrate to you. So you can get a wide range of sounds uh, from this one note block. Uh, the other thing that the note block can do, instead of me going around hitting each of the blocks in time, so you, I guess you could get a group of students together to play, <laughs> try and play a song, <laughs> although that would be really difficult with the timing, but hey, uh, timing is a key part of music. Um, you can start using the redstone items to interact with the note blocks. So if I turn the lever on here, there will be an active signal sent through the redstone wire here and it will activate the note block and play one note. So you'll notice that the note is not increasing in pitch in this case. So what I could do is hit the block to sit it at the note that I want it to, um, to, sorry, set it at the note I want it to play and then hook it up to a redstone system to get it to play a little tune. Now I'm not going to go into depth in this particular video on how to make songs and music with the note blocks in Minecraft with redstone. I'm just going to say it's possible, it's involved, but it's possible and it's, uh, there are some really, really cool examples on YouTube that you can have a look at um, to give you some ideas of making music within the game. <laughs> One
what I like about doing that as an activity is that it requires a lot of musical understanding from the students and planning out the songs and the notes and the timing uh, to get it working really well. So that is how I see Minecraft being used in music. I'm not a musical expert, but um, that is these are some of the items that you can explore uh, to use Minecraft in your music lessons. Now let's have a chat about the visual arts. Now Minecraft seems a bit of an unconventional tool to be using in visual arts, but it's actually uh, really good for exploring a few, a few different aspects. So one aspect is that obviously Minecraft worlds are based around cubes. So Minecraft is a fantastic place to make pixel art and to have a look at uh, pixel art as a format. Um, we have a lot of different colored blocks to choose from because we're just going for color and look you don't need to worry about the properties of the blocks. Colored wool is a really good one to go for or concrete here. Um, comes in lots of different colors and you can have students um, now you could just use any blank creative world you can build straight up and down in the air or building on the floor is probably easier because you can place the blocks wherever whereas if you try and build in mid-air nothing will happen unless you're building up on an existing block um, in creative mode the blocks are easy to place and destroy and you have unlimited blocks at your disposal so yeah a great um, tool to explore pixel art the other thing i really wanted to show you for, which i think fits really well in visual arts is the structure block so the structure block is a special block that you wouldn't normally use but I, I think it has a lot of really good applications for visual arts so when i place the structure block you'll see this grid sort of hovering in midair with a green line and some white lines here and what the structure block does is it allows you to copy copy and paste anything within that grid uh, or even export it so let's say i wanted to export this 3d item here i can place my structure block if it fits in with it within the cube great i'm ready to go if it doesn't you can right click or interact with that structure block and change the dimensions of the cube here or the offset from the structure block here so um, I can remove blocks completely I can remove that bounding box I can export but first I want to let's say I want to make this a bit bigger and capture more of the world I can do that um, I can also start changing the offset quite how I wanted it to um, to move where that box is located so um, you can see here up the top right is our axes so our color coded axes so for our X Y and Z to hopefully so you don't get too confused about which number does what um, and when you're ready to export you can click export it will save the file as a .glb this file format just means it's a 3d object so uh, on Windows Paint 3D will be able to open that as a 3D object or, or any other program that can open 3D uh, objects. You could, um, and if you get stuck or you're not sure, just click the question mark here and it will um, give you some information about, about how to uh, use the structure block. Um, the bonus thing about this is once you've exported it outside of the game, and what I see a lot of people using this for is to then 3D print these objects or to use them in augmented reality experiences or even in a VR um, experience so if the students are making a game in VR and Unity you could export like a Minecraft town into that or, or what there's a lot you can do if you export the 3D files so what you could do is you create something amazing in 3D within Minecraft so need, not even knowing, needing to know how to do 3D modeling properly um, you can still create something in 3D and then have that 3D printed. So there's a lot to explore here with the structure block here within Minecraft for visual arts. So again, it's, the game's useful for exploring pixel art and the pixel art style uh, and talking about that style from all the video games. You can even uh, grid paper as a physical version of this is good for um, making some you know simple 2d pixel art drawings 
And the other thing that I think Minecraft is quite good for, and this is going to lead into the next section on looking at some existing worlds, is build challenges. So um, you might not want to make it a competition, but there's a lot of worlds here set up for um, ha setting up students with build challenges. Uh, now you could make it a speed run where, you know, there's a timed element, a competitive element to the task, or you could just let them um, spend the time that they need to build what they're building. Um, but it's a great way to tool for expressing creativity and building amazing things. So I wanted to show you some of the amazing existing lesson plans and worlds that are here and are really suitable for the arts subject area. So under play and view library, uh, you can visit any one of these, but uh, monthly build challenges has some interesting worlds um, that you can explore there. But under subject kits and art and design, you can also find these on the Minecraft Education Edition website as well. You don't need to be in the game browser. Um, there are some great um, arts based worlds here. So there's some influential artists and museum based worlds when you're looking at the history of um, your art form. Uh, there's a lot around architecture and rep replicas of existing things from around the earth, whether there's a really great um, Venice replicator, there's uh, a mini Melbourne, um, and you, you can see a lot of ancient civilizations, sort of monuments in here as well. Um, you could look at color, um, designing monster mashup patterns and repetition. The terracotta blocks within Minecraft have some beautiful patterns on them. Pixel portraits, uh, so looking at pixel art and all sorts of bits and pieces here. And this was the set world that I used when I talked about drama and creating sets. So there's a lot there for you to explore. Um, I'll just open one. So if you are in the game menu, all you need to do is click on create world. It will, if you're connected to the internet, it will download the world and open it for you automatically. You will then have your own version of that world to play in. Otherwise you can download them from the Minecraft website, education edition website as well. So usually the worlds will have instructions or things for you to engage with. So if we go to, let's have a look at the College of Art. Um, you can see there's some really impressive builds in here. I'm going to fly, can I fly? No, nope, but I can run. <laughs> So you don't feel the pressure to create something yourself if you're not comfortable doing so. Oh, give blocks. Yeah, I want some blocks. Oh, there we go. So that's an example of an NPC that's programmed to gift items to players. Oh, am I allowed to build in here? Wall 17. Yes, so you can see here in this world, these brown blocks mean build allow. So students are allowed to create art and build on the walls, but the rest of the room is not. You cannot be allowed to build in, so they can't destroy the museum, but they can produce uh, artworks on the wall here and fill up their own your own classroom museum of art. So they are some of the existing resources that you can tap into to use Minecraft in your arts classes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you have learned something new and have been inspired to try using Minecraft Education Edition uh, to help teach the arts.